Every NBA season, we see a few casualties of war as coaches get fired and new meet, I mean, faces step in to take their place. But it seems like such a weird thing, right? Like, why wouldn't you just let the man you hired to lead your franchise finish the season? I mean, this is sports. Anything can happen. So why can't a coach turn his team around? For as much as we may argue with firing a coach saying it came too early or too late, Obviously, front offices put in a nauseating amount of thought into hiring or firing a coach. But is it worth putting in that much thought? Is it worth making an in-season coaching change? Let's find out. Let's start with the details of David Fisdale's firing, the event that actually inspired me to do this video in the first place. The New York Knicks canned him just 22 games into his second season with the team. But it seems pretty straightforward why they may have done it. Fisdale had a 202 winning percentage with the Knicks, one of the worst in history for a head coach with over 100 games. The Knicks were absolutely pitiful on offense, ranking last in so many categories you'd fall asleep if I listed them all. Now it's worth mentioning the Knicks were at least average on defense, ranking 14th in opposing points per game. But of course, the NBA is an offensive league, so that old school approach when you're 4 and 18 definitely wasn't going to be enough to save his job. On top of all that, the Knicks have a history of being impatient with their head man. Now, their playoff success, or lack thereof, would suggest maybe the Knicks should consider adopting a different strategy when it comes to their head coach. It's easy to fall down the proverbial slippery slope when it comes to hiring coaches. Fire too many, too early. You mark your front office as untrustworthy and your job as insecure. And that's the worst thing you could possibly want. No one wants a job they could actually lose at any time. In such a high-stress environment like NBA coaching, and especially in New York, the least you could give your coach is a feeling of security. And it seems the Knicks are in free fall on that slippery slope. But we have a problem here. It's not always bad to fire your coach. There are actually examples of teams that improve their situation with a smart coaching fire. Of course, the most famous example was when the Cavs fired David Blatt in 2016 and went on to win the NBA title that year under Tyron Lue. That same year, the Rockets fired Kevin McHale just 11 games into their season and went on to make the playoffs. In 2018, the Bucks fired Jason Kidd in January as they sat just one game over 500 and made the playoffs that year as well. Now, there's an argument for and against all of these firings. Blatt's Cavs were 30 and 11 when he was shown the door, so who's to say they wouldn't have gone on to win the championship that year? The Bucks were over 500 and struggled to make the playoffs in a pretty bad Eastern Conference. Yes, the Rockets were under 500, but at 4 and 7, the season's barely started. And when you look at the other teams to jettison their headmen in the past, things haven't exactly gotten better. HoopsRumors.com compiled a list of every fired head coach in the last decade. For every Jason Kidd, there's a Jeff Hornacek, who was canned by the Phoenix Suns and replaced by Earl Watson, and the Suns actually got worse. Watson then became a casualty himself the next year after just three games. Now I'm going to make a quick aside here, but it's all going to make sense in a minute. I think in general, fans in the media give too much credit and too much blame to head coaches. At least in European soccer, very often the managers make the personnel decisions directly. As far as we know, in American sports, head coaches don't have that level of say in who their team acquires or who they drop. And of course, the head coaches don't play the game. If Kevin Knox misses an open three to tie a game for the Knicks, it's hardly David Fisdale's fault. Likewise, if Alonzo Trier drops 40 without missing a three, the only thing Fisdale could have done was design a scheme to give him better looks, an argument which goes out the window if Trier drops eight the next night. Coaches are fired too liberally, in my opinion, and the fact only three teams in the last five years have made the playoffs after firing their coach seems to back that up. But coaches are responsible for one very important thing, culture. You can't prove culture with numbers. The Spurs have as strong a culture as exists in all of sports today, and they're 8 and 14 right now. There is a whole lot of talk about the deficiencies in the Cavs culture after they fired Blatt in 2016, but they went on to win it all. There are good teams and there are bad teams. Often bad cultures lead to bad teams and good cultures lead to good teams, but not always. 
And those are things that only the people within the team truly know. We as fans can make judgments about it from the outside. The media can get even closer. But only people within the team truly know if their coach is not promoting a winning culture. Take that Cavs situation in 2016 I keep going back to. The deficiencies we perceived in the culture I was referring to came mostly from differences in how Blatt, the front office, and the star players wanted to run the team. They had the best player on the planet at the time in LeBron, they had a double-double machine in Kevin Love, and a living bolt of lightning in Kyrie Irving. So the rigid European structure of Blatt just didn't work long term, even though they were the best team in the East at the time. The more laid-back players coach mentality of Ty Lue worked better at the end of the day. And it's hard to know that before you actually do it. There's so much money on the line in major professional sports, there just isn't enough time to wait it out if you in the front office believe things aren't working. Firing David Blatt stands out as one of the most out-of-nowhere decisions you can think of in the last decade. But for a team where the expectation was championship or bust, the Cavs just didn't have the time to wait and see if Blatt had the winning culture needed for a championship. So that's it. No twists, no swerves, straight up. The front office knows best. David Fisdale wasn't instilling the needed culture as judged by the people who would know best. And that's where I come down on the issue of firing coaches. And I'll admit, that's not where I thought I would come down. I thought for sure I would look at the numbers and fine coaches should never ever be fired mid-season for any reason. And I found some numbers suggesting some teams' offenses got worse, some star players declined numerically after a coaching change. Hell, even while I was writing the script for this video, I was trying to work in those numbers I had found to prove it actually isn't a good thing when you fire a coach. But the more I think about it, the more I write, the more I talk, the more I've come to realize it's not a numbers-based thing. Because at the end of the day, coaching isn't really a numbers game. You can judge record and whatever else, but head coaching is about culture. And I feel like I end a lot of my videos this way. I don't give you the answer. And in many ways, I, I kind of just ask you more questions, if I'm being honest. I mean, you're all big boys and girls. You don't need some guy on YouTube to tell you what to think or even what to think about. I'd much rather just give you more, more to digest, more to think about, more context to keep in mind. So the next time you're talking to your friend about this story or, or that event or whatever, you have more complete context than you would if you just read an ESPN story or something like that. Sports discussions aren't always about who's right and who's wrong. A lot of the time it's about understanding more about a situation. So if you're a Nick diehard that's tired of seeing the, the constant revolving door of coaches, well, constantly revolve, Maybe there's a more of a reason for that than just poor results on the floor. And that's what we're all about at GA Sports, doing the research to save you time so that all of us can have more meaningful sports discussions. We appreciate you watching.